uh, and talk about the disc more conditioner. There's a couple, there's two other points I want to bring up on conventional and the swing frame more conditioner. And this uh, uh, one in the swing frame more conditioner is an adjustment that uh, the guys made during lunch because uh, when we we're cutting on here yesterday, and whether it's because of the way the crop is laying or whatever, I don't know. But when we we're cutting on here yesterday, uh, we had a situation where we had some wrapping on the auger. And the normal correction for that is, is to uh, remove, if the crop is heavy, remove those little uh, strippers on the outside of the auger. Those, they're about a foot wide. Remove those, raise the auger, and allow more clearance for the material to go under the auger, which generally corrects the problem. And uh, we did that last night. We made a couple rounds this morning, and things appeared to be working quite well. Uh, you may have noticed Sneaky Davey, when he was uh, cutting, he stopped down there away. And then he proceeded on. And what was happening was it wrapped again, and he just stopped long enough for the auger to, to clear itself and then move on. Uh, but we brought it up with, the, with our service people and decided to move the flippers, or those, those flippers in the inside, because this is a third correction that you can make, or third adjustment, stagger movement to the outside, which they did. Made a couple rounds and eliminated the problem totally. So it's something that you want to remember. If you do have wrapping on the auger, you can, first of all, reduce, remove the strippers from both sides of the auger. Uh, you can raise the auger to allow more material to go under the bottom, and if that doesn't take care of the situation, then stagger the paddles, and that will cure the problem. So it's just something else that you can use to, again, make a better demonstration or make a better performing machine. Uh, the next point is on the 2170 sickle drive, as well as the sickle drive, the pitman drive, on the swing frame war conditioner. Uh, <clears throat> uh, in the update kits, and, last, and as well as production last year, on that bearing down the bottom that pivots that drives a sickle, we put on some clips to hold the bearing, to hold the bearing casing tight against the against the uh, uh, the bearing itself or the cast case uh, cast bearing housing against the bearing. Uh, for some reason or other, there is more clearance between the end of the clip and that outer race of the bearing than we want to have. And what in some cases can happen, and has happened in a very few cases the thing will start to move, it'll actually start to move back and forth and start to pound and either bend the clips or, or, uh, uh, or distort the clips enough so that the bearing really has a chance to move. Uh, what we would like to suggest that you do, and all machines that you have in inventory, it just takes a couple seconds to do it, the machines that you have in inventory that have not been delivered as yet, take those three bolts out that hold those clips and then there is a heavy washer. Take that washer out and use two 3 8 flat washers and replace that heavy uh, washer with two 3 8 flat washers. And what that's going to do is going to put more tension, it's going, to it's going to eliminate that clearance between the edge of that clip and the outside race of that bearing and eliminate any chance of that problem happening. So uh, when you get back, tell your, your set of people, your service people to do that in the machines you have in inventory and it's going to eliminate any, the possibility of any Up the hole, huh? Uh, the, this is a, really the first uh, viewing of the new Gale DC2340 uh, in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, just to give you a little bit of a background of disc more conditioners, we talked this morning and told you that 17% of all the more all the more conditioners sold in North America, I should say in, in the state of Wisconsin and, and in Illinois, are of the disc concept. Uh, Throughout, the, throughout North America, it's about a 33%. And we expect that market to grow to uh, potentially a 35 or 40% share of the overall more conditioner business. So uh, it's a pretty sizable number of machines that are going to be sold in this, this concept. The Gale Company was one of the first to introduce the disc concept to North America. Uh, back in, 18, in 1980, uh, we brought in the, the Vicon, we call it the 1040, uh, we brought that machine into the into existence, and we have been in the disc more conditioner uh, business from that point on. Uh, we continued to buy them from Vicon and, and watched the uh, Coons and the New Hounds and the John Deere's and the New Ideas uh, really get a uh, you know take some of that business away from us and get a better hand. And so, about three years ago, uh, we made the decision to to design our own disc more conditioner. And this is what you see here: the results of that. Uh, of those years of work. Uh, 
the the disc concept itself has some very definite advantages in a lot of conditions. Uh, the disc concept, though, has some limitations, and I think in order to be fair with everybody, we have to talk about the strengths. At the same time, we have to talk about the limitations, primarily so we know what we're selling, and so we don't oversell or don't sell a product in areas that it's not going to work or it doesn't work as well. But basically, the disc more conditioner. Uh, will work in areas where you have number one plugging on sickle bars and number two where you have where you want to increase the overall ground speed or you want to cut more material in an hour or a day or whatever the case may be. Uh, the the disc concept in this particular machine our, our 2340, our 2340 uh, has a nine foot one inch cutting uh, cutting uh, width. Uh, the unit uh, has seven discs and these discs have two blades on them and the blades, the discs rotate at 3,000 RPM. So, you know, from a tip speed standpoint, you're talking about 175 miles an hour tip speed. It cuts on impact, the same as your lawnmower does. And what basically going to happen is, is this machine is going to cut anything that comes in its path. And it's going to cut it and it's going to move it into conditioning rules. Whether it's down and tangled, whether it's, it's uh, rotten material, whether it's fine grasses, no matter what the case might be, uh, it's going to cut whether it comes in a path and it's not going to plug. So, the biggest advantage that we have with the disc concept is that it works in cases where sickle bar machines have some problems. Uh, you know, if you get in some conditions with a sickle bar machine, I don't care whose it is, whether it's a Gale, a John Deere, a New Holland, a Heston, the Case International, no matter what the case might be, uh, if you get certain conditions, the sickle plugs, you stop, you back up, clear it out, and continue going forward. You don't have that same problem with the disc more conditioner. So, in those conditions, even if you're traveling at the same speed, because you're always going forward, you're going to cut more in an hour or more in a day. So it does have an, a very definite, definite advantage in the, in the uh, conditions that cause a problem with the sickle bar machine. Uh, uh, secondly, you can cut faster. Uh, because of the fact that tip speed right here is 175 miles an hour, is that you can cut a, at a faster ground speed than you can with the sickle because you have more cutting capability. And so for that individual who wants to lay more crop down, you can do so with a disc as opposed to a, a sickle bar machine. But there are also, also some disadvantages. A disc more conditioner is about 20 to 25 percent more expensive than a sickle bar machine on a per foot basis. So the guy really has to be able to justify uh, that particular machine in order to spend the additional dollars. You have the innovator type farmer though who wants the latest and the best and the newest and this guy is going to buy it whether it, you know, whether it costs more or not. So you have that innovator guy but the other guys you know, they really have to justify it, and I believe that in a lot of conditions, it is very, very justifiable, this additional 25%, because in the long run, it's going to do more good for you. Uh, so that's one, of the, that's one of the problems or one of the limitations with the disc more conditioner. Secondly, because of the fact that it cuts on impact, and because of the fact that you have these discs that are smaller, 18 inches in diameter, or 16 inches in diameter, and they cut outward once in a while, uh, in light material, in some conditions, you are going to leave a little bit of a streak. And the reason for that is, and it's true with all disc more conditioners, is as this knife is cutting outward, as it's cutting out this way, uh, you get a crop that has uh, little growth or little height or little stability. There's nothing there to hold it up while it gets cut off. So it has a tendency once in a while to push the crop over, and therefore, in light conditions and, and some, in some other conditions, you're not going to get as good a cut with a, sickle, with a disc machine as you are with a sickle bar machine. Now these are sickle bars, a, a, a disc machine, these are, these are discs and sickle bar machines in general, not specifically Gale or anybody else. It's, it's inherent in the product itself. Uh, the other thing you get into is in a down condition. You know, if you want to take a look at some of the crop that we're cutting today, this is a down tough crop right here. And because of the, of the weather conditions this year, there's probably a lot of this stuff around. But when you're going with the direction of the, that the crop is lying, the crop is lying like this, you're going in this direction. That knife is only going to cut as high as a path that it makes above the ground. Now, if your crop, if, and we're cutting, I'd say, probably an inch and a half or two inches right now. If you have the crop that's <laughs> laying down more than that, it's not going to cut it off. There is nothing there to pick the crop up and move it up into the, move, pick it up as it, as it goes through the sickle. So there are some conditions that you cannot cut as good as you can cut with a, with a machine with a reel. But I think what the person has to do is he has to weigh the good with the bad. Frank Wilcox is going to run this machine today. He's going to show you some of the different speeds that you can cut at. Now this is a relatively, we should stand back, Larry, you get out of the way? Okay, well, when Frank starts, we'll just move back. Anyway, he's going to do it. 
Yeah, he, hey, listen, he got the short straw, he's got to run it. Okay, so, but what's going to happen though is that, that he's going to show you some variety of speeds. Uh, you can cut with, this is a relatively flat machine, a flat field, it's an even field, so you can cut at a, high, at a higher speed than what Frank is going to cut at, but you know, he's going to show you where you can cut at 10 miles an hour and do a good job of cutting, or 8 miles an hour and do a good job of cutting. And I think we all know that even, I don't care what sickle bar machine you're talking about, that once you get over 5 or 5.5 miles an hour, you've got some cutting problems. So what the customer has to do is weigh the good with the bad, realizing that not every machine is going to do exactly the same job in every condition, but you have to take, you have to weigh the thing out and do what's the best for him. So these are the things that we want to show you today. Now, just a little bit about the, uh, again, about the history of the machine. Uh, we've been working on the machine for four years. Uh, it's now ready. We have made this past month, in, in the month of May, we made a prototype, a, a number of prototypes on the, on the assembly line. They're assembly machines. It's kind of like a pre-production to get everything straightened out that we know is straightened out. We want to get the machines out in the field so that they run. We get them under all conditions to monitor and to make sure that everything is the way we want it in order for us to produce a full production run in October and November of this year. And that's what we've done. Uh, we have a number of machines that are still available. Uh, you've received information on the machines are still available. We want them sold retail because we want to get them out in the field so we get some acres on them. And you know the pricing on that's the, the, the price is roughly $14,000, $13,995. Uh, if you have any prospects after you see the machine work, if you have some prospects or some customers that you think may be interested in buying a machine, talk to your territory guy, go out and see him and see if you can't get the job done. I think it would be nice to, I'd like to see us get a number of machines sold in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, currently, yeah, first huh? of all, if you have any prospects, get out and run it yourself. Oh, absolutely. Well, that's what you want to do, right? And then talk to your territory guy and Talk to your territory guy and, and go out and see the guy and, and uh, get the thing sold. Uh, we've sold quite. A, we sold about two thirds of what we built already, and uh, you know we sold them in Michigan. We sold them in uh, Ohio because Ohio is a good state for more conditioners as well as New York and Pennsylvania. You know, right now about 50 percent of the machines of more conditioners in, in New York are are, sick, are disc more conditioners. So we got some sold, but it would be nice to get them sold around here. So if you have a prospect, let's make sure we get out and talk and talk to them. Okay. Just to give you an idea of what we're talking about in the disc more conditioner. Uh, first of all, one of the things that we did to, with our engineering department is said that we want to have a family approach to more conditioners. We don't want to have one looking like this and one looking like this and one looking like something else. We want to have a family approach and we're building the family around the 2170 concept. And you can obviously see that there is a lot of similarity, not necessarily the same parts, but a lot of similarity between this machine and the 2170. Uh, you also see that we have changed some lines in this more conditioner. You know, we don't have square corners. We don't have this. We have radiuses. We have some things that make it more eye appealing. You know, you take the you take the hood down and look at the lines. Uh, it's different than anything else that we've ever made at the Gale Company. I want to assure you of that. And and one of the reasons is. That, this, that we have gone to what we call a, a, a simultaneous engineering concept of product development, where we get a lot of people involved at the very beginning. And, and the result of this, the result of the whole design configuration of this machine is indicative of what happens when you get industrial designers in at the very beginning. Uh, we had the concept and we brought our industrial designer in. We said, now, let's give this thing some look, some appeal so it looks good. And what they can do at the beginning is they can tell us how to make the framing around our concept to come up with something like this. And I really feel they did a hell of a good job, and, and we're really quite proud of it. So it gave us a, uh, it, it gave us a family approach, yet it gave us a very forward-looking machine. And it's something that I know from my product line you're going to see more from the Gale Company. So <clears throat> uh, we have a machine that looks good, uh, and it's designed well. It's very, very simple. Uh, we basically have the same drawbar design as we have on the 2170 that gives us the option of a hydraulic cylinder to move the header backwards and forwards uh, from the tractor seat. We have gone to the equal angle hitch. Now, I realize that, that uh, it's a little bit of a problem on an equal angle hitch to get that, hit, that drawbar extension onto the, onto the tractor, but once you do it, it makes for a much better running machine. Uh, we eliminated, by doing this, uh, we eliminated the, re the necessity of a constant velocity drive line. 
Now, we all know that constant velocity drive lines are good. They reduce the vibration and this type of thing. But we also know that if you don't take care of them and don't operate and don't grease them properly, they become very expensive. So what we try to do is to el eliminate the constant velocity drive line, which we did by going to the equal angle hitch. Uh, when you operate the machine, make sure that you, that you, uh, uh, you cut some square corners because you're going to find out that this drive line gives us a capability of cutting greater than a 90 degree corner and not having any vibration in the drive line. You can turn this thing so short that that wheel over there will back up as you turn. So that's turning a very short without any vibration. So that's also very important to understand. Uh, the, the, the drive mechanism of the machine is very simple. We come in from our, from our power takeoff shaft into a singular gearbox which is mounted above the first disc. And there is a drive shaft that goes right down into that first disc which drives the remainder of the discs. Off to the side of this, drive, of this gear case is a belt drive. And when you take a look at it, there's a belt drive off on this side which operates the lower conditioning roll. The upper conditioning roll then is driven by a chain from the right hand side. The entire drive mechanism floats with the header. And so we have a simplified drive mechanism. It's very simple. Uh, it's very few parts. It, it's uh, easy to operate and it provides us the ample horsepower to the cutter head first of all and secondly to the conditioning rules. So it's, uh, it's a very, very simple drive system. <clears throat> the cutter bar itself is made for us. It's made for us by a firm in France, uh, Kuhn, uh, who, who, is, who makes more cutter bars than anybody else in this business. You know, they run through about 25,000 of these things a year. So. Uh, they're very much in tune as to how the, as to how the uh, uh, cutter bars are supposed to be made. Uh, you know, we look at things from a warranty rate cost to determine what the success of machines are. Uh, and, and in the 25,000 cutter bars, they have a warranty cost of less than three quarters of one percent. So we know that we have a very reliable bar here and we're very happy with it and it's uh, working out quite well. Uh, to ensure the success of, and, uh, and longevity of this cutter bar, what we have done is that we made a cradle. There's a cradle under the cutter bar that totally encloses the cutter bar. And so uh, there is a, it's about a quarter inch, quarter inch steel cradle that this cutter bar fits in. And that's going to protect it from any obstacle or any, anything that might hit out in the field. So where every other more conditioner in the marketplace today uses that bottom of the cutter bar as a frame, we have a second frame down there to protect against it. So that there's nothing there that's going to cause, if you have hit a rock or hit anything else, you don't actually come up against the cutter bar, you come up against this main frame down the bottom. So uh, we feel that like we're offering a whole lot more protection. Rock guards are standard. There's a skid shoe under each one of the cutter bar, under each one of the discs. The skid shoes have one position. Now we can adjust the cutting height and we can also adjust the angle of the cutting by changing the angle of the cutter bar. You know, we can go from about an uh, inch and three quarters or two inches of cutting height up to about uh, three and a half to four inches simply by adjusting the, adjusting the angle of the cutter bar. So it's very simple to adjust it. And again, you want to cut the cutter bar down if you want to cut lower. If you want to flatten it out, if you want to cut a little bit higher, you're flattening out the cutter bar, which is very easily done. So the whole system is, is built around uh, the idea that it's going to be simple, yet it's going to be adjustable. It's very easily adjustable. We use, have gone to, uh, on this machine, to a tie core conditioning roll. Uh, tie core is like we used to use in some of our old more conditioners. It's a it's a rubber t uh, it's a tire carcass roll that is uh, manufactured for us by a firm in Chicago. Very very durable and very very effective. Uh, this particular machine we're using six ribs and six roots to give us a little better conditioning action. We've also gone to a nine and a half inch roll as opposed to the seven and three quarter inch rolls we use in the 2170. That's a molded rubber roll. Now there's a couple of reasons that we made that we've gone this way. One of which is, is that we have two different widths of cutter bars. Uh, we will have this fall. We have a 9 foot 1 inch. We'll also have a 10 and a half foot. And what we want to do is we want to maintain the same roll relationship, cutter bar relationship on both machines. In order to do this with a molded rubber roll, we'd have to buy a new mold. And those molds you're talking about $250,000, which is a lot of dollars. And so by going to a tie core roll like this, we can vary the size of the roll just by just very simple. It's very, very easy to do. And it's certainly much less expensive. So that's one of the reasons why. The tire carcass roll is a good roll. It's, uh, you know, if other people use it. We've used it. We know just exactly what's going on. 
The other advantage of a tie, of a of a tie core roll in some of these areas where people get rather finicky is the fact that the roll is machined after it's made, and so we know this roll is 100% true. You know, it's truer than a John Deere roll, and what John Deere talks about their uh, urethane rolls as being true. This is much truer than a John Deere roll, so that gives us an advantage as well. We've gone to a nine and a half inch roll because of the fact that that we don't have a reel feeding the material into the conditioning rolls, and we want to eliminate any possibility of wrapping on the roll. And you know, a larger roll, it's more difficult to wrap, so we want to a nine and a half inch as opposed to a seven. But basically, uh, from your farmer's perspective, the only thing he wants is a roll that's going to condition the crop. He doesn't care what it looks like, how it operates, he just wants a roll that's going to condition the crop, and this does a very good job of conditioning it. So the crop, the crop, the crop is cut, it's lifted up using the knife and the deflector into the conditioning rolls. It's fed into the windrow shields and on and into the windrow itself. Now, let me just get back over here. As far as the wind, as far as the windrow forming chambers are concerned, we made some changes in here as well, and we've gone to we've gone to two adjustments that can be used in order to get just exactly the size, of the type of windrow that the farmer wants to have. We have a baffle, adjustable baffle, right here that will drop the crop right down the ground as we did on the 2170 and the, and the 2240. But we also have adjustable windrow shields. So that first it can adjust the fluffer as well as the windrow uh, forming, the windrow shields on the side in, a, in order to get just exactly the type of, a, the width that windrow that he wants to have. So it just, just gives us a little more flexibility uh, as to what other machines have and some of our, other machine, of, of our other machines are. But basically the bottom line is, is this machine will make a real nice, high standing, fluffy windrow that allows more air to pass through it, and as more air passes through it, the crop is going to dry faster. You know, we've talked about it many times before, is the only thing that dries hay is air. And so the more air we have going through this crop, the faster that windrow is going to dry, the faster the farmer is going to be able to get into the silo or into the barn. Okay, as far as our flotation is concerned, we use the same three point flotation as we have on our 2170, works out very, very well. When you take a look at the disc more conditioners available today, and you take a look at the flotation capability on this machine as opposed to anybody else's, you're going to find out that it's much, much more responsive. We can have less weight in this header, which is going to eliminate some of these problems that other people experience. The bottom line is, guys, is that we spent a lot of time designing a disc more conditioner. And we didn't want to rush this thing through. We wanted to make sure that we had it right when we started. And uh, we have a machine right now that's going to go out and do an excellent job of performing no matter what the conditions might be. But I think, and I want to restate it again, is that every machine has some advantages and every machine, no matter what it is, has some limitations. And we have to remember that there are going to be certain crops that this machine is not going to cut as well as a sickle bar machine because it doesn't have the reel, it doesn't pick up the crop. And also because of the impact cutting does cut sometimes as the knife is going out. But you have to weigh those against the speed and against the cutting capability that you have when the conditions really get tough. And so, again, I say, we have some available. If you have anybody that you think may be interested, make sure you run this machine this afternoon. Get on it. We've got a lot of hay to cut. Run it. See what you think. Go out and talk to that customer, and by golly, let's get her sold. Okay. Any questions? Yes, sir. How many different cutter bars are there on the market? How many different ones are there, Leo? Basically, there's about three. Vicon has one, Kuhn has one, uh, Lily has, and the new idea system, which is a Lily system. Now, Kuhn makes, you know, we'll, we'll lay the cards on the table. Two, Kuhn makes two cutter bars. Which one this? This is one of the Kuhn. The old style. This, uh, this is the more reliable one. The old style. The, old style. Uh, uh, the, the, the Kuhn cutter bar that you'll see in the Kuhn more condition of the John Deere and the New Holland are a different, it's a larger, it's a larger diameter disc. And so they'll have six discs where we have seven. Uh, they also, on that machine, they also have what they call a replaceable station where you can replace the bearing just by pulling the, the whole disc unit out. Uh, the, the problem, well, the fact of life is, is, that, is that in some con contractual agreements, uh, we couldn't get that cutter bar. But we tested this one and feel, as does Kuhn, that this is actually a better cutter bar. It's a more reliable cutter bar than the larger unit. Uh, and the, the difference is, is that you can replace, in that machine, you can replace the bearing without taking the cutter bar apart, but if you have to replace any of the gears, you've got to slide them all out of the end. 
you can't take the cover off. It's a welded cutter bar, which is a problem. And so uh, we looked at the warranty history on this cutter bar. We talked to Kuhn and got their opinions on it. We feel very, very comfortable with it. Very, very comfortable. What about him? Yeah. Do you have any impact on these? No. No. It's a, what do you mean? I, I don't know what you mean by impact pen, but. No, huh? Hmm. What we do have is we have a have a free swinging knife that it hits something, it's going to fold it back, and it's going to uh, this the skid shoe out in front is going to ride over the top, across the top of it. Anything else? Yes. Well, that's a little more difficult, but we're working on it. Uh, what what we want to do is you know this mar this market right here on this machine is is obviously the very largest. Uh, but down the road, we're looking at swing frame machines, which poses totally different problems. Uh, and the main problem is, and this is another thing we should talk about, I guess, and I guess thanks for bringing it up. Uh, but a machine like this requires more horsepower than a sickle bar machine. You know, we're talking about in a nine foot machine, we suggest that you have 65 horse, 65 to 70 horse. You get into the 10 and a half foot machine, you better have 85 or 90 horse. Now, we all know that's much more than you require for a, a, a conventional nine foot more conditioner. I don't know what horsepower tractors these are there you know most of them are a little bit larger than what we really need but you take a swing a 12 or 14 foot swing frame over there you can run that with 60 horses without any problem at all you take a 12 or 14 foot disc more conditioner you're talking about in excess of 100 or 120 horse now to operate it hydraulically becomes a problem because you just can't generate that much horsepower hydraulically so there are some other complications that we're trying to work out but uh, we down the road tend to have one anything else yes they don't cut rocks very well, but the what and this is where the flotation comes becomes very important, and fast response becomes very very important. If you hit a rock, the knife is going to fold back, and the and the the rock guard of the skid shoe will pick the the header up over that rock. Yeah, but you still break a rock. Still, when you hit that rock, it still break it. You know, break the rock? Well, it, it could. It could. It could, or the knife could fold back. You know, uh, let's face it, there are places that these shouldn't be used. And if you have an excessive amount of rocks, you shouldn't be using them in rocks. But what's going to happen, you see what happens is, and this is where the difference becomes, is that if you take a sickle bar machine and you have a lot of rocks, you slow down and you raise it up to cut over the rocks. People on these things tend not to do that, right? Or they're, they're going to say, hey, we can still go at 10 miles an hour and we'll cut it right down the ground and you have some problems. If you would treat rocks the same way with, with this machine, as you do with the sickle bar machine, you're not going to have any problem. Yeah. Anything else? Yes. Uh, knives have a single bolt. Reusable? Yes, they have two sides. The bolt? Yes. Uh, should be. Should be, yes. What's your experience and recommendation on uh, resurfacing those knives for sharp? Uh, our experience has been that's, that you don't gain a thing by doing it, Roger. The only thing that we, the only thing that our suggestion would be, is that, is that, uh, uh, and it's going to wear more in sandy conditions. But don't wear the knife more than half the width. Wear it back to half the width because then you start working on the other side. So you turn the knife over before you get to half the width and you can use the other side and then replace the knife. Yes. As far as that flow and that fine stuff I had, we've had that problem with some of these. You slow down about half. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's exactly right. Ground speed and RPM does have more of an effect on cutting than, than what it does in a sickle bar machine. Yeah. What about stubble regrowth? What about stubble regrowth? No. You know, and this is what a lot of people say that you have, that you, it, that, you know, they say your alfalfa is not going to grow back as fast if you, if you cut it with a disc or with a sickle bar machine. And, and the fact of the matter remains is that an alfalfa is an example, it doesn't grow from the stubble anyway, it grows from the ground. And so if you don't cut off that, that bud that's going to start off from the ground, you're not going to have any problem. Uh, I, don't, I don't think that's going to be a big problem. Or it hasn't been at, at this point, as a matter of fact. Yes, George? Spring tension on the conditioning rolls, where is that? Uh, right up in front here. There's a spring right inside here, and that controls the conditioning roll. But again, like uh, like another like in the rest of the machines, is that 
is that the uh, rolls adjusted from the factory, and unless you're doing something that's strange, like opening rolls up to, to uh, cut grain or something, is that just let it adjust the way it is. Okay, yes. Manually, right. Well, we're working on it. There's a number of things that we're working on that, that we, we expect to have available this fall, but it's not available right now. One is a hydraulic adjustment on the, on the angle of the guard. The second is, is that we're working on a, uh, and we applied for a patent on, we don't have it totally finished or totally proven yet, on a method of, of uh, relieving tension opening rolls for slug to pass through. And we expect to have that available for this fall as well. <coughs> Anything else? Okay. Yesterday. Give it to him. If he doesn't like it, take it back. He tried to John likes the John Deere. Yeah. Well, then he'll love this one. It's got the six. And whose account is it on? I mean, whose account is that? <laughs> if we take it back. Well, you know, if you can't sell it, we're going to move it. What's the one?